Uh, welcome back. Now, the International Monetary Fund in its most recent edition of the World Economic Outlook uh, lowered its global growth forecast for this year and next. According to its baseline growth forecast, the global economy is expected to grow by 2.8% in 2023 from 3.4% in 2022 before recovering to 3.0% in 2024. Now, these compare with its previous forecast of 2.9% and 3.1% for 2023 and 2020. 24, respectively, in its January 2023 WEO update. I am now being joined by international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insight. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure, always. All right, let us just start by uh, the uh, figures that, that uh, were released uh, by you know, the IMF. Now, this is the weakest growth profile since 2001, except for the global financial crisis and the acute phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. But just how did we get to these low projections? I think, like you, you said it right, and rightly, we're coming out from um, COVID, then... Um, we thought that was the worst that could happen. Then the Russia and Ukraine crisis came in. And I think that has been the game changer as far as the economy of the world is concerned because it came up with a lot of destructors, destruction to the economy, especially to the developing nation. Energy went up and also affected the, 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 the developed nation also. And so we saw the agricultural sector also shrink. Remember, Ukraine is the largest um, um, exporter of green to every part of the world. So. Um, gas also is where you, um, um, so Russia is the, is the largest exporter of gas to European Union countries also. So it's, it's, it's um, a lot of issues that came out because of the, of the, of the, um, of the crisis, especially the Russian-Ukraine crisis, and boiled down to, then with that came the snowball effect of um, inflation, global inflation pressure because of um, demands and supply. And then also the high cost of energy, especially oil price went up to above hundred dollars. Just trying to steady now, and with that steady, we saw OPEC also cutting um, output, also to make sure that they maintain price between eighty and ninety dollars per barrel. So I'm not surprised about what uh, we are seeing, especially with what the IMF have said is something that um, definitely all of us know will definitely happen to the economy. Uh, we don't expect a, a quick rebound of the economy at the moment, especially. When there seems to be no headway in bringing Russia and Ukraine to the peace table. Right now, with the forecast uh, that is expected to slow uh, from 6.2, uh, 6.0% in 2021 to 3.2 uh, in 2020. And this year, we are having uh, a much lower percentage in uh, 2023, that is 2.7%. With all of this, what is the implication for Africa and indeed Nigeria? For Africa, it's not good news, you know, um, because Africans have not been doing trade with themselves, that much trade within themselves. And so what we've seen that a lot of African currency have been devalued in comparable to euro or to pounds or to dollar. So we are seeing weaker currency, especially from African nations. We are seeing high debts um, from African nations also. All these are, are part of what is affecting um, Africa. And structurally, you know, Africa has, also has its challenges that have to deal with cost of production because um, the higher, um, even the, the countries, the African countries that are the, among the producers of food um, seems not to be, African countries seem not to be getting those crude from them because of logistic challenges. So Africans are still getting their crude from, from, the, from the Middle East also. So all these, um, is affecting Africa generally. Then for Nigeria, uh, you need to look at um, inflation pressure that has to do because a lot of our goods and services are uh, imported into this country. But I think the greatest concern for Nigeria at this moment is the inflation figure. And also this is boiled down to one effect, high cost of um, production, um, um, high cost of um, energy, and also high cost of petroleum product. All these it comes in why then again must not forget our debt burden, especially that we've not been able to attract foreign direct investors into the country. And another major challenge that we are coping after inflation is our, our currency uh, um, 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 devaluation. Because by the day, our currency seems to be struggling because we are not able to earn so much to even defend our currency like we normally do before. Because what we earn in terms of high crude um, energy 
uh, high crude price, we, we lose in terms of um, payment of subsidy for refined petroleum all products. Right, so, Mokta, as we round off, uh, Mokta, sorry to butt in, as we round off because of time, you know, with all of these projections and um, effects on Africa and indeed Nigeria, what curbs can um, the country uh, do uh, since it is actually planning on uh, you know, stopping uh, uh, fuel subsidy in June? With all of these uh, predictions, now what curbs should Nigeria be putting in place as uh, we look uh, towards uh, getting a very viable economy for 2023? Very quickly, please. We need to do a structural re readjustment. And like you said, the first thing is to look at the subsidy regime, whether it's workable. How much do we really have to spend on subsidy? Then we also look, need to look at the non-oil export. Uh, we need to improve upon it, and we need to look at our, um, our competitive advantage on that sector. If we are able to do that too, and then basically the major, major thing I'm expecting the new administration to do is how can you have, how can you attract foreign direct investment and portfolio investment into the country, then remove subsidy, with that also begin to attract a lot of effects into the economy once we are able to stabilize the interest the the the, the, the foreign exchange market then we we'll begin to see goods and services begin to come down because then the manufacturers order will begin to assess effects at a fixed rate both both market determining with both in the official and parallel market once we are able to do this i think our economy will recover and i i think um, we should be thinking towards that in the short term and in the long term we need to be thinking of palliative that are going to touch both the rich and the poor. All right. Thank you so much, Mokhtar, uh, for all of the insights that you have uh, you know, uh, given to us concerning the issues that are plaguing the world's economy this year. We do appreciate your time. And of course, um, uh, like you always do on the show, thank you so much. Thank you. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Business Insights returns same time tomorrow, half past nine. Bye for now.